Fresh like I just got a contract Fresh like I just got a max Roll up this, we ballin' to the max Fresh like I got a contract Moving through the city, we be going. Yeah, yeah. Roll it, that's you pulling, now you know it. Fresh like I just got a contract. Fresh like I just got a max. Roll up, that's we balling to the max. Fresh like I got a contract. Moving through the city, we be going. Yeah, yeah. What's up, NBA fans? We are here. We are back with actually a Hoops and Brews first, so it's very dope for us. Um, we have our first actual current NBA player NBA that player. we're going to interview and talk to, uh, Mr. Troy Brown Jr. of the Washington Wizards. He's a guard and a forward. He's been blazing it up in the bubble. Um, has been you know um, you know notarized by ESPN as being one of the breakout uh, you know players of the bubble. Uh, personally, I actually really like his game, and I've been looking at it um, you know a lot as kind of we were prepping for the interview and just kind of seeing his overall play. So we're going to be very excited to bring him in in a second. But, Pappy, I wanted to kind of know what your thoughts were kind of on having our first NBA uh, player on the show. It's been a long ride. Yes. It's been a long time since you came to my apartment and told me you wanted to start a podcast. Called yeah, nah, I just, I mean, just even, you know, seeing from where we started, what, I think about four years at this point. Yeah. We started 2017 season, yeah. right? You know, the, I mean, just all well, the growth, yeah. even. 2016, 20, October. 20, yeah, yeah, tw yeah, yeah, 2016. I mean, just seeing all the growth from covering the Clippers, you know, now interviewing people. Um, it's just like, I don't think that when I came up with the idea that like, I thought that this is what would come from it. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's great, it's great. Yeah, so I'm gonna bring in Troy so that way he can join us. Troy, welcome to Hoops and Brews. Thank you for taking the time well, to speak you, with us. Thank you, man, appreciate it. Uh, you know, I actually found your, you know, your vlog on YouTube because I work for kind of digital entertainment companies and I was looking up some creators and I came across your vlog and I was like, oh, this is really, really good. So that's, you know, actually when I hit you up or let, or at least left a comment and then, you know, your team responded and got with us. So thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. No, I appreciate y'all having me on here. Yeah, it was funny because I actually I saw the comment and I was like, oh, like this is dope. Like I want to be a part of that. So I appreciate y'all putting this oh, together for real. That's dope. Oh, well, thank, thank you, man. man. We definitely thank appreciate it. You know, we've talked to kind of prospects and former players and European players and college players and stuff like that. But we actually haven't had conversations with players who are currently in the, in the league. league so you know it's nice to actually be able to have that conversation i mean obviously we cover the clippers as media so we talk to you you know you know to you guys and i've covered i actually cover the game that you guys played in la versus the clippers uh mm -hmm. you know you know this uh season and even just kind of seeing the media circus behind the scenes with Rui was really eye-opening for me because it kind of right. really let me know how much of the you know you know the international spotlight has been mm -hmm. on your team just because a guy like that is on your team and then kind of watching your vlog and, and kind of seeing the behind the scenes experiences through the bubble thought it was really really cool so you know once again thank you you know kind of for joining us so um you know pat if you have any other words i would love to you know kind of you know go ahead and get started no no yeah. I'm, good. I'm all good yeah all right perfect so you know obviously there is a lot of stuff going on right now in right. the league uh you know you're a young and up-and-coming player so you might not have the voice of a lebron james or kevin durant or chris paul but all of you guys collectively are a collective unit. You collectively bargain. Uh, you know, you know the players today for the Milwaukee Bucks after talk with you know, you know between the Raptors and Celtics about boycotting the game that's supposed to take place on Thursday. Mm -hmm. The Bucks decided to boycott the game. The Magic left the game, and then pretty much uh, you know as it stands currently, uh, all of the games have been canceled for the day. And mm -hmm. the players that are remaining in the bubble were you know, you know will meet at eight o'clock tonight to kind of talk about what's going on. And all of this was sparked because of the Jacob Blake shooting, which also is just kind of another, uh, you know, name and hashtag in the long line of hashtags that we get when you're an African American and you see another unarmed African American or even an unarmed African American man murdered at the hands of the police. What are your thoughts as you know, you know, kind of about everything that's been going on? And obviously, you were in the bubble. How did it feel to kind of be shut off from the real world while kind of everything else is still continuing to happen? And also one more thing, if, if, if I could also yeah. say, I want to know also if you had any reservations about even coming down to Orlando um, in general. Um, well, for me personally, like just taking the stand on what's going on and having that voice, um, I'm more than OK with what they're doing. Um, at the end of the day, it has to be bigger than basketball at some point. Um, you you know, like it just in general, with like everything going on, um, a lot of people were upset with going down to Orlando in the first place just because of the fact that 
um, we wouldn't have that freedom to protest or to be out physically. But at the end of the day, you know, that's our job and that's what we have to do. But I don't mind the protest at all, especially just from my sense and how strongly I feel about it, you know, so, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah, Kenna, what were your initial reactions when, you, um, if you saw the George Floyd tape? I know there are some people who have elected not to see it because of, you know, kind of the viciousness of it. Right. But what were your reactions when all of that stuff was happening kind of as the talks were, you know, heating up to come back? I was a personal person that was kind of saying that you all should have boycotted before the season. And it wasn't that I was, you know, that I painted any of you guys out to be selfish because I actually made it a point to not call any of you all selfish, but I just yeah. essentially believe that this would happen again and then we would essentially be at this place that we are in now kind of what were your initial reactions when that happened with george floyd and kind of you know you know and when you all did get the call back how did you feel about it well um just starting with the george floyd thing it was it, it was it's hard because you're stuck in a bind because it's like okay if i go then i have a platform to use and express because the whole world's watching the whole world is going to be watching the nba we're one of the first sports to start back up so it's like it kind of takes you back to a sense where you're like okay well if i don't go i'm still able to help but if i do go it gives me a bigger platform to express uh, to express how i feel about the situation and just use that platform on a higher note and so i could definitely understand both sides of it everybody's trying to figure out the right way to go about it and like I said, I applaud the teams that are still down there that are boycotting it, um, you know, not saying that, you know, they shouldn't play at all, but just in general to take a stand on it and actually like do something about it instead of, you know, cause a lot of us, like we try to use our platforms and stuff like that. But like you said, being in the bubble is hard like because you're not able to actually physically be out there and be a representation of the black community. Yeah, and even uh, and even well, actually, Pavy, I'll let you go ahead and follow. Yeah, and um, you're young, like you're 21 years old. So I mean, just think it back when when the Trayvon case happened. I think I was 21, like your age. It's yeah. so, like you growing yeah. up and just seeing, you know, after video, after video, after video, after video, right. after video, and just getting to this point. I mean, yeah, like like just how was that like how how mentally how is that for you you know like i mean yeah, obviously I'm, yeah we're not 21 anymore. yeah like we're, yeah like i'm not i'm, I'm not I'm 30 now like and he's I, below yeah. 30. But, i didn't i didn't know. like i didn't grow i mean obviously you know my parents are from the south so i always knew that these things happen obviously like everybody knows it but it's different right. you know seeing it on video and mm -hmm. growing up seeing it on video you know like again i was an adult like i was an adult doing this period but just how has that been for you mentally just over the years seeing it time at the time at the time Honestly, I mean, I would say it's just shocking. Like it's, it, it really like blows my mind that like we are at where we are today and stuff like this is still happening. And just the fact that people think that we're belligerent and like arrogant for asking for the same amount of respect kind of shows you where we are. And so yeah. for me, like, when I was younger, when the Trayvon thing happened, that was like at the first time in my life where I was like, that could have been you. Like, you know, like you kind of like, put yourself in those shoes like all he was doing was walking home and that happened like you know and so it's just it's just it's, it sucks like it just sucks in the world we live in and so all we can do is for the people that have the voices is try to speak up and just use your platform because i feel like if you don't say anything you might as well just be sitting back and letting it happen you know and so for me personally i've been trying to use my platform and just do stuff here and there and voice my opinions on it because it's something that needs to be addressed yeah, Much and I have a, a, a follow up, not, not necessarily a follow up, but you said mm -hmm. something in terms of, you know, kind of people not looking at us as black people with kind of needing the same level of respect. We've mm -hmm. heard a lot of people tell you all to shut up and dribble or right. just shut up in general. So how do you feel about that entire shut up and dribble thing? And also, I've been a person that said, you know, uh, you know, I've, you know, you know, you know, Pappy and I have had many heated arguments about yeah. sports returning and things of that sort, yelling mm -hmm. and screaming at each other obviously about you know kind of a common you know discourse but when we were talking to each other a lot of the conversation kind of stemmed from well you and i have a platform and we aren't professional athletes so why is it that we can have a platform and we not be professional athletes but we feel as though professional athletes should just shut up and dribble how do you feel about that um i mean for me personally i don't like you know like i kind of go about it like lebron i feel like set a good example with that like just kind of taking that and running with it and kind of making it a slogan and like you know like because at the end of the day it's one of those things where it's like if you fight back you lose but in the same way if you don't say anything you lose too and so just being the bigger person about it but still making it known 
and you know putting it out there that that's not okay like because for me at the end of the day i'm a person just like you are the amount of money that i make doesn't have anything to do with the amount of respect that i should get towards anybody else mm -hmm. so i mean that's that's my thoughts on it yeah i agree with you 100 percent on that so you know thank you for being as candid and as open as you were you know it's kind of yeah. speaking about that i know that it's like a hotbed issue and like yeah. we aren't we don't necessarily get in the business of sensationalism but I believe in having conversations that need to be had. And if we can have these conversations, yeah. you know, I feel like they need to be had. And honestly, yeah. you're a 21 year old. And that's the thing that I've been yeah. telling a lot of the kind of the younger people that we encounter that follow us. I've been, you know, you know, I've been preaching entrepreneurship and, and being an entrepreneur and owning your own business and owning your own stuff and trying to develop your own companies and talking to a lot of the youth that follow us about not trying to go out and follow the paths that have been set before mm -hmm. because systematically we are still being held at a disadvantage and then yeah. on top of that we essentially have to deal with us being systematically you know killed as well so mm -hmm. you know all of those issues are things that really matter especially to people like us because you know we love this platform but at the end of the day when we turn off these cameras these webcams we just go back to being you know you know you know Jonathan and Thomas and not who we are on these cameras so the, you know no nobody else cares about that so i'm glad that you know you know you know that you all are being as proactive as a league as you are. And although I was critical of everybody coming back at first, I genuinely applaud all of you all for the job that you've done. Go ahead. And I, would, and I would like to say that just, I mean, you know, just me as an African-American, but I'm, you know, like I said, I'm almost 30 years old now. A lot of guys in the league are young, you know, and I, going back to what I said, you know, about just growing up and just seeing these things, you know, every single day. And I would actually was a component of you guys going down there to play because I was just thinking about maybe the conversations that maybe, you know, it could make somebody have that they don't want to have. And right. I actually think, you know, if the players do decide, you know, to not continue with the season, I think that's a huge message. And, and I think that that is the best possible way to use your platform. You know, like, obviously, you went down there. People woke up today and were excited to see the Lakers, you know, possibly advance. People woke up today and now they don't and now they don't get to see that. And now right. they have to exp maybe, maybe somebody has to explain to their son, like, OK, well, this isn't happening. Then their you know, son asked their dad, well, why is this not happening? You know, yeah. we don't know what type of conversations you know, yeah. that you guys can drive. So I just want to say, like, I, I want to commend you guys um, for the stance that you've taken and for the things that you've done in the boat, because I know it's not easy. You know, you're down, you're locked in, you know, Orlando. There, there is still a whole pandemic going on. Right. You know, it's not like that isn't the case yeah. as, as well. You know, you're yeah. locked there. You're, you know, you're away from your family. So I want to say that I, that I appreciate um, the stance you've taken and the work that you that that you all have put in day after day yeah I thank you it. yeah yeah so we'll wrap that up and let's go ahead and let's actually kind of just talk about you in general you know that's really why we wanted to you know have this discussion just so happened that this happened the same day that we were right. filming this interview but when i looked up you know i, I you know I've, I've seen you play obviously um and you know you know and i have watched your team and and as i said before i covered you you know you all you know for a game this season is media um, so my question for you is, once I saw that you were born in Vegas, I actually was very interested <laughs> by that because I don't really feel like I see a lot of people or know a lot of people nah. that have grown up in Vegas. So talk to me. What, what What's life like growing up as a kid in Vegas? How is that for a young guy that wants to be a hooper living in Las Vegas? Um, for me personally, like just growing up, you know, there we don't have a very big sports culture in Vegas. You know, it's a lot of people that come to Vegas and like they bet on stuff that's already established and other teams and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But for me growing up, like the Vegas community when it comes to sports isn't very big. Like no, like, like you said, like you don't know anybody that makes it out of Vegas mm -hmm. and like you can like actually like just be like, hey, he's out of Vegas. Like this is a fact and he's in the league doing this and that. There aren't a whole lot of us. And so for me, like when I was younger, it was really hard just because I never had like that big brother figure to like follow or like show me the steps. So like for me, it was like, Yo, I'm gonna just give 110 and you know pray this sticks. I'm gonna like pray to God. Like I'm gonna just work so hard to where I know that I gave 110. And if I don't make it, like I'm okay with that because I gave 110 to this. And so like growing up, you know, it was hard just because you know Vegas is a passing state. You know, everybody just kind of comes to Vegas. They stay for a couple years because the economy's like lower and you pay less. And then they move to California, move to Arizona. So, like a lot of my friends like would come and go. And so for me, like that basketball was like all I had. Like you feel me? Like that was the only yeah. thing. I, like my family and basketball, those are the only things that like like stick for me. And so, you know, just growing up, I just always just looked at basketball as like a gateway. And so it's helped me so much to get to where I'm at. And so I just thank God for the opportunity that I was given. 
are you a Raiders fan now, or were you a Raiders fan before, or like how does that? How does those? Yeah, yeah. You're like, where does your football allegiance lie? I'm not Outside a huge of Oregon, fan. obviously. I'm just not a huge football fan in okay. general. Like, okay. just for the city of Las Vegas, I'm like yeah. happy, but like yeah. from a like rooting for the Raiders standpoint, I'm more like, we'll see like how everything goes. Yeah. And, yeah, like, but from like them coming here is definitely helping the city 100. percent So, yeah. um, so you said that you didn't have you know kind of like a big brother figure, but what there, but was there anybody that you kind of like looked up to like outward for you know um inspiration? Like, were there any stories um of people uh, that were already in the league or maybe didn't even make the league? Just you know guys that you kind of looked up to and was like, you know what, if he can do that, then I can at least do this. Um, I don't know. For me, like. I would just say, like, specifically, I don't have anybody, like, in mind for me. I think the biggest thing was more so of, like, I didn't – I never felt like I was in a box. Like, I always felt like I could always get it done myself. Like, I'm really prideful when it comes to stuff like that. Like, the same thing you guys, like, were talking about earlier about, like, telling kids to, like, be their own entrepreneur. Like, that's how I feel with my life. Like, nothing is off limits. And so, for me, like, I was like, who's to say, like, a kid from Vegas – that like doesn't go to a prep school and goes to a regular high school in Las Vegas, Nevada, can't make it to the NBA. Like, why is that not possible? Like, I don't feel like I need to ride anybody else's coattail to get to where I need to be. And so to make it to where I am now, like with that, like yeah. embodied in my head, you know, for me, like definitely gives me a lot of confidence. Yeah, yeah. So actually speaking of that, you know, kind of in, in confidence, you were a guy that, you know, that actually took advantage of the bubble play to get better. Mm -hmm. You know, you came back, uh, you know, physically, you were right. improved as an, you know as an athlete. You dropped some body fat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some body fat. Uh, so kind of you know what was life like in the bubble for you? Obviously, we see the vlogs, but you, right. know, you know PG spoke the other night about his yeah. mental health in the vlog and how I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not the vlog in, in the, the bubble. bubble. In the bubble. And how yeah. and, and, and you know and how you know you know kind of people don't really understand how much of a you know you know kind of uh, you know, toll it takes on it. Uh, yeah. you, know, you know, on you all in terms of mental health, how was that for you? Or was it just more so about you trying to create those experiences through your vlog? So that was more so what you were leaning into when you were by yourself. Um, For me personally, like just going into the bubble in general, like my mindset was so focused because this was a very big opportunity for me. And I knew for me personally, this was a very big chance for me to take a step in my game, but more so to show people what I'm capable of, you know? And so... For me, the biggest thing with that was I was just so focused for those four months that mm -hmm. we were off that like like preparation gave me confidence to do go do what I did. And so um, I would say the biggest thing coming out of that was for me, like I was able to stay so focused that like I didn't waver. Like you feel me? Like regardless of what was going on, like, I wasn't worried about like what food I was like eating or if it was super high quality or anything like that. I was just so focused on the job at hand that – I didn't see anything else. And so talking about the Paul George thing though, like it's hard. You're away from your family. Like I was only there for a month and a half. And like, yeah. that's a lot like to be away from your family, you know, not see, like your girlfriend or like your dogs or anything like people just think like, because we make so much money that like, it's like, oh, okay, you're fine. And like I said earlier, we're regular people just like everybody else. The money is just a bonus on top of something that we love. So mm -hmm. when PG openly came out and said that, I I fully supported him with that because that's hard. Like they've been there for so long and like you have to make it past the first round of the playoffs before you can bring anybody into the bubble. Yeah, and literally you guys couldn't come within six feet of anyone else, right? Or at least unless you were like doing physical activities or training, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, so like they, they preached the like social distance and stuff to yeah. us. So we had to follow like guidelines and stuff like that. And even talking about like interacting with your teammates, we weren't allowed to go in each other's rooms and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, that's interesting. So what did you? Yeah. So what did you do to keep yourself sane? Yeah. Like, what did you do outside of basketball? And also, like, because I kind of even like on the press conference, we've asked Doc, and uh, you know, I cover the WNBA, so I've also you know asked some of the players, mm -hmm. like, how do you not just get so locked in on basketball? Like, what do you do where it's like, you know what, I can kind of check out of the game and just have fun with life and just think about something else for three, four, five hours? Right. Well, for me, I felt like, like I said, like, for me, it was way different. Like, I'm a young dude. I'm trying to make a name for myself. So, like, this is a huge opportunity for me. Like, mm -hmm. and especially, like, for the Wizards, like, we have so many young guys that are just yeah. trying to really, like, show yeah. what they're capable of. So, like, yeah. for me, it wasn't that hard to just be like, yo, I'm locked in. And then I had the vlog on top of that. 
So I had something keeping me entertained and, mm-hmm. you know, keeping me locked in and like just being there for the moment, like mm-hmm. and being able to be and live in the moment. But for a lot of those guys, like they've been in the league for so long that it's really hard to just be like, OK, I'm going to be away from my family for two months and not care and just mm-hmm. focus on basketball. Like that's really hard because like yeah. the people that you live with take your mind off of basketball. Yeah. So like when you can't come home and like, talk to those people or like get stuff off your chest or like take a weight off. Like that's hard because when you go back to your hotel room, which isn't home, yeah. like, and you know, it's not home. So mentally it's just, it's draining. And I could definitely understand where he's coming from. Yeah. Well, speaking of your vlog, I want to get into that because you know, I, I you know, that's kind of how this all started. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about your vlog after we watch it, but I want to play about, about a minute or so of a clip from okay. your vlog. So that way we can show the people what you do behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dave, they know you, man. Yeah, Dave, thank you. Hey, man. That shit is crazy, dog. Yeah, just go ahead and cuss one, don't you? Knowing that. <laughs> hey, we got, we got, we got to get together here. Yeah. We gonna go back, and we are gonna plot out. Let me get ready to park the facility here. And I'm gonna always say that what we got here is a failure to communicate. You know that movie? It's a movie cool called. No, no, no. Cool Hand Luke. Cool Hand Luke. Oh, yeah. cool hand what we Luke. got here is a failure to communicate. I don't think you understand me, boy. What I'm trying to tell you. Or what we can do. Emma, Emma likes to play with babies. Or we can do. Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster love chocolate chip cookies. Or we can do count. Count the knee. One. How many? Two cookies. Three cookies. Four cookies, Cookie Monster. Okay, so let's go gator hunting. What are we gonna do? Nah, bro. I'm not. So that was a clip from Troy's vlog. Um, the thing that I really enjoyed about it was number one, you showing a lot of the behind the scenes team personnel. I yeah. think it added an extra dimension. I think my favorite part about covering the league is being able to meet the people behind the scenes, to meet the yeah. reporters, the coordinators, the right. food people, the people, you know, you know, that you know, the security guards, knowing the security guards as staples and that kind of stuff. So being able to see you not only interact with your teammates, but interact with them as well was pretty cool. But also the thing that I felt like I noticed in your vlogs is that you all seem to be, although you're a very young unit and although you all didn't win a ton of games in the bubble, you seem to be very, very close with Thomas Bryant and the rest of the guys on the team. And I think a lot of that chemistry showed on the floor, especially in terms of, you know, you dishing out the ball, which you pretty much, I think, I think you have uh, at least four assists in five games and you have five assists in three bubble games. So how do you feel like, you know, you know, uh, the team camaraderie and you showing that in the vlog actually translates in real life? Are we actually seeing how you guys interact in real life? Oh, yeah, I would say like for us, like being a young group of guys, like we we just wanted to make the most out of our opportunity. So everybody down there were in high spirits. Um, You know, everybody hates losing. And, you know, where we were at standing wise didn't help us like mentally. But I would say from having each other standpoint, it definitely was good. Everybody had each other's back. And like I said, we had a young core out there so we all could relate. and We all were really bonded with each other. So everything that was on there was like mostly like really like raw cut like i didn't have to make a lot of cuts to anything or like everybody was just being like themselves like and just trying to make the most out of the bubble experience Mm -hmm. what 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 made you was this a decision that you kind of decided you know way ahead of time that you know you were going to document the whole thing or was it something that you kind of got there and you was like you know what like did something happen he was like you know what i gotta record this or was something that you you know knew um beforehand Um, Well, I got somebody recommended it to me and I like I have always just been in the position where I'm like, I need to take care of basketball first. Like I've always wanted to do like vlogging and like do the YouTube stuff. But I was just like, I'm too locked in on basketball. Like I got to like take care of this first before I can like worry about anything else. And so Mm -hmm. the biggest thing like coming into it, like the first day, like I didn't even really record anything. Like when we flew to Orlando and then finally I got there and I was just like, 
I feel like people would really like to see like what's really going on within the mm -hmm. bubble. Like people want to know what's going on. And so with the group of guys we had and even the Wizards, like I tweeted it out and then the Wizards like responded to me and like called me. I was like, hey, like if you do it, we'll help you with it. And so just knowing I had that support with it and knowing that it was something that I could really enjoy myself and make it my own really helped a lot. So, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right, before we get ready to get you out of here, what I really wanted to ask you is what are your expectations of next season when you guys get John get Wall and Bradley Beal? I understand yeah. that you all have a young roster and there may be some trades, but I actually think that you're one of the guys that they should, know, with, without a doubt, keep. I actually think that, you know, kind of, a lot of the way that Houston runs their offense and kind of with everyone being positionless, I think, mm -hmm. you know, with a guy like John Wall and Bradley Beal and Rui, and even Thomas Bryant, I think you guys can run a similar style offense and play very, very fast. You're a right. great passer in transition. Bradley Beal's a great passer in transition. John Wall's obviously, when healthy, one of the best point guards in, in the NBA and of probably the last 10, 15 years. So mm -hmm. what are your expectations for when those guys come back and for yourself? Because you've also, you know, slowly but surely crept your way up into that starting lineup. And I think you have the ability to stay there. What are your thoughts? Um, I mean, for me personally, like the biggest thing is like, I feel like next year is our, our opportunity to win. I feel like next year is our season for us to really go out and make the most out of us developing. Um, that's what we've been doing uh, this year. And so just making the playoffs is the biggest thing. Like that, that's step number one. Like we definitely have to make the playoffs. And so um, from there, I mean, I feel like we have enough pieces to where we could really do some damage next year. And I feel really confident in the, in the players we have and the, the coaching staff that we have. I just feel like at the end of the day, it's our responsibility to go out there and make that happen. And so um, I feel like we're more than capable of making the playoffs next year. And that should be the goal. Um, how happy are you that you got to have the on-court responsibility that you had in the bubble, you know, going towards next year? Because I, cause I would assume that would give you confidence um, in times where it's like, you know what, I don't need – not not I don't need them, but it's like I can do this myself. If I get into a situation, I trust myself to be able to go make a play. Um, so I guess how good is it that you had this experience before you get them back next year? Um, it was great just for me personally, just especially from a confidence level. Like just like you said, like no disrespect to John or Brad, but just knowing what I'm capable of and doing it at the highest level, especially during like the bubble, like, you know, when the whole world's watching and just going able to being able to go do what I'm capable of. That definitely helped me a lot confident wise. And, you know, for me, like I don't take it as like a disrespect to like John or Brad. I just think it's more of a. Like, I can help y'all. Like, I can help take some weight off y'all back. Like, you feel me? So, yeah. Okay. I got to ask a question. And I know Bradley Bill going to be mad <laughs> at me, but I need to know. I know you're going to say yes because he's your teammate. But I, yeah. I, I know Bradley Bill was very upset about not making all NBA because he averaged 30. Thank you. Well, hold on, wait. We've had this argument made, many of times on the show. I have by the said way. because you all did not make the playoffs, he should have mm -hmm. not been all NBA. It's no offense to any of you all. You all are great human beings. But I didn't think he should have made all NBA. Pavy disagrees with me. What vehemently disagree with you? Well, because my thing. Okay, so you you say that, but then at the same time, it's like they let guys into the All Star game that don't make the playoffs. <laughs> How does that make sense? So you glorify somebody. It's the All Star game. That's like a mid season thing. Those guys. I mean, am I wrong? Brad didn't I'm just the asking. All -Star team. But huh? some people did over him. Like that's my argument. Outrageous. It's like, how are you gonna? snub him for all-star if you're not counting records but then put him on all nba so like my thing is like you either have to do one or the other that's how i felt about it because i felt like he got snubbed for all-star and i'm i'll say that to anybody so if you're not gonna put him on yeah. all and then he needs to make all nba yeah i i don't think i don't necessarily think he was snubbed for all-star but i also yeah, there's 30. can you let me finish 30 yes 30 G, yes troy but, troy, like, troy 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 I'm troy real quick saying, troy, troy. I'm sorry, troy. can you please explain to people how hard it is to average 30 american points in the national basketball association i averaged 10 this year okay <laughs> so he averaged 20 more points than i did. like you feel me like at the end of the day like i said like i don't think you can average 30 points and not be one of the best players in the league. Thank I don't you. think that. Thank you. Okay, Thank fine. You. I, I, fine. I, 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 look, but look, it wasn't look. like we were dead last. We were literally in exactly. You were, we were you were a ninth, and had he played, I think you all. Had might he played, have you made had a chance to make the playoffs. I think you would have. I think you would have. I don't. I, I don't know how y'all would have fared against the Bucks, but y'all would have made it. I, th I do think y'all would have made it if he would have played. I actually was very bummed out that he didn't make it. 
Because yeah. I have I had a bottle bet with Pavy about Karis Levert because he told me Karis Levert was going to average 24 and the Nets was going to win more than two games. I told mm-hmm. him he was out of his mind and, and they won more than two games, but he didn't average 24. He averaged 22, I think, point one. So Pavy, I want my do say. But but actually, next year we're gonna have to make some bets on you, so that way you can come through. But Troy, we yeah, definitely yeah. appreciate you for taking the time yeah, to speak you, with man. us. Sorry, we ran over about 10 minutes uh, long, kind of than what initially. But we appreciate the conversation. Anytime yeah. you want to come back and just talk hoops, or just you know, you know, you know, kind of shoot the shit in general. Um, you know, you're more than welcome. Obviously, you won't be in the bubble for a while, and we have no idea what's gonna happen as it pertains to the next season. So anytime you want to come through, talk, or if you have any clips that you want us to promote or put out there, or you want to come and plug a new vlog or do whatever, feel free to hit us up, uh, you know, and you're more than welcome to come on our platform at any time. Please let the people know where they can find you at. We really appreciate it. Um, well, I just want to say thank you to you guys for having me on. You know, I definitely appreciate it, especially y'all reaching out to me. You know, that's huge just for me in general, because I took a limb just starting a vlog thing. So I appreciate y'all on that. Um, I mean, you can find me on Instagram at Troy Brown Jr. And then um, same thing on Twitter. But at the end of the day, like I said, I just want to say thank you to you guys for having me on. All right, man. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're the hot take masters. But as as a, as like the people don't get to see when we report, we're actually right. very good reporters and we cool people. We spew hot takes. But is that not what it's for? Actually, one of them. Really quick last question. How do okay. you all feel about shows like ours? and first take and number one do guys actually watch it and number two do guys actually care definitely depends on the player because my thing is like i'm kind of like a positive energy type of guy so like for me like i'm okay with like you keeping 100 but like if you're just gonna bash people and stuff like that i don't hear that like that's just how i am like you yeah. should just put positive energy in the air but um but for me personally i i think that what y'all do is great like everything like i kind of watched a couple of the videos y'all had early on and stuff like that and i think y'all do a great job because y'all just keep everything clean cut and really 100 about everything like thank y'all you, are great shooters about what y'all talk about so, so yeah. thank you yeah thank we try you, not man. to go that. overboard with the disrespect because we understand we see certain guys that were even in the nba that we think go a little bit too far and like we really try to stay out of y'all personal lives we really yeah. only talk about basketball. Right. If you right. played trash that day, I'm sorry, G. You no, played that, trash that, that day. Right. You know yeah, I mean? when, PG, when PG was trash, he was trash. Now, did people need to call him all the names they called him? No. When PG fought, no. It, but, 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 he not going to act like he was good in those games. I mean, you weren't right. good. But, you know, he made a change. He turned it around. Now he back playoff P again. You know, so, I, I, you know, I, I'm glad. I'm glad that at least some of you guys don't take it as personally and you do at least kind of see the place for it because I do think that you know we aren't responsible for you guys being as big as you are but I do think that shows that that you know center around what you guys do does help to elevate your sport so I always think that it's good when you guys interact with people and also this is my biggest thing for you as a as a young player growing up I would like to make you you know a personal challenge to you to give you know more black media members more opportunities to be able to talk to you including when you become an all-star a superstar right. if even if you become an nba and, and, a, and a lebron level figure i think right. that it starts with a lot of you guys giving people that look like you the opportunity to craft stories around you all or at least talk to you all so that way people that look like us can see you all talking to people that look like them from their perspective versus seeing kind of, you know, you always talking to the same original people that are always, you know, at the forefront. And I'm not just talking about us. I'm talking about a B reporter that maybe just want a minute of your time. I think that, you know, you guys, as well as the WNBA players should really put forth a lot of the effort to make sure that black media members are looked out for, because I think that, you know, if you guys want to create change, it begins off the floor, obviously. But mm-hmm. I think that you all can affect change by just giving more black media outlets the opportunity to, to cover you guys. Because even if a black person is saying something bad about you, you know that it's one of your people. And they you would at least think can understand or some of the plight. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of these reporters and even the way that they were talking about Kyrie and they aren't black. And I don't think that black media felt the same way about certain things that were going yeah. on. So thank you very much again. And we really, really we appreciate, appreciate it, dude. It, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, no, I appreciate y'all. Like you said, though, it's, it's our job to normalize it like, at the end of the day. So, so yeah. Yes, Troy Brown Jr., thank you for joining us on Hoops and Brews. We will get up with you next time. And until then, yeah. fans, thank you all very much. Patreon.com slash h and if you would like to support us. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. This has been Hoops and Brews. Peace out. 
Fresh like I just got a contract. Fresh like I just got a max. Roll up this, we ballin' to the max. Fresh like I got a contract. Moving through the city, we be going.